So back when I pre-ordered Devastator, I got this as well, and it took forever to come out. But hey, Aegis 3 Up finally got their shipments out, not sponsored, and so I can finally take a look at it, and it's, it's pretty good. So this kit fixes a lot of the problems I had when I first looked at this figure. Check out that playlist linked below if you want to see all the videos on Devastator. But assembling this thing can be kind of a pain. The instructions are very helpful. They're very clear. I wish Hasbro did instructions like this, if I'm honest. It's just the tolerances you have to be careful with. Especially, um, well, the thing you want to watch out for the most is the flaps on the shoulders. You have to attach those at a slight angle to get them on and they do not come off. Which is fine because for all the other modes of scavenger they don't need to go anywhere they just stay in that same spot. So that's cool but you have to approach it at an angle to clip them on. Once this thing is assembled it's really good looking. It majorly improves the look of this already awesome set and I'm so glad I got one. The main thing it fixes for me is the head and that alone just makes this figure look a lot better than it did before. The head was a weird shape on the standard configuration so this new piece that attaches on is awesome. The red paint matches almost perfectly to the colors of Hasbro but you, if you get up close you can still see kind of a difference. It's a little darker on the upgrade kit than it is on the toy but it's it's if you don't know what you're looking for it matches pretty well. I need to gush about the head for a minute though. It's so good. It fixes the shape and the screen accuracy so well. It just looks very nice. The amount of detail is incredible. It's got the little ear thingies at the top and everything. The parts in the lower jaw are supposed to swing out, but mine made a really loud, ungodly cracking sound, so I refused to move them. So be careful with that. It, but they are still cool and they are still supposed to move. I say that in air quotes. The flaps and pipes I didn't think would change the look any better for me, but they do and they're extremely necessary now. I can't look at this thing without them. It just it makes the figure look bulkier and heavier like in the film. Plus it adds extra sense of realism with the branding of the vehicle just chilling there on the flaps. I know my channel does a lot of kibble removal, but this addition of kibble helps the design a lot. The grinder on the back looks extremely nice and the parts on the forearms are awesome too. They even have the little swivel missile pods on the side that can turn, which he used in the film a little bit but he used in the video game quite a lot so I like this addition because I played that video game so much. The chest panel is great, it's just a nightmare to keep in place, at least on mine. It doesn't want to stay on the pin or in the clips, but it looks nice. If I can get I can get it on the pin, but I can't clip it in. I can get it on the clips, but then it doesn't stay on the pin. So it's one or the other for me. One cool thing about the head is the fact that it keeps the neck piece in place too and closer to the head, therefore making the neck look a lot better than the stock configuration. I will say, it's so difficult to get the two clipped together and separated. So once you clip them together, I'd recommend not separating these two because then, you know, stress marks, thin plastic, you might break the upgrade kit. The front of Mixmaster is supposed to clip into the back of the of Devastator, but mine just never wants to stay. There's uh, two pieces for that for the upgrade kit, but it just doesn't want to work. As for robot mode parts, you do have a cannon mode for Mixmaster, which looks kind of horrible if I'm being completely honest, and new shoulders for Scavenger, which improves the look quite nicely and makes him more bulky, even though I still don't like this design and he really won't stand up for me. Now let's talk about the thing everybody wants to know about. As first run exclusive, if you pre-ordered this kit, you get the balls. They're there. One, one has a hook, just like in the film. I'm gonna stop focusing on them now so this video doesn't get taken down. One other thing I would like to talk about really quick is the plastic quality. A little thin. It's a little thin on the upgrade kit, so you're going to want to be careful with a lot of the components. The attachment joints for the shoulders, the shoulder panels, are quite thick, so you won't have to worry about those snapping when you put them on. Taking them off is another story, but putting them on, you'll be fine. The head and the chest plates specifically are very thin plastic, so you want to be careful with those. I really like this set. If you have Studio Series Devastator, then you should really consider buying one of these. It makes the figure look so much better. And if you're only planning on displaying him like I am, it's a very nice and welcome addition. It isn't really designed for play so much as things 
like the new neck connector and the chest piece are very finicky and as i mentioned the plastic's a bit thin so you might you do run a chance of breaking it but it looks absolutely amazing on this figure i would it's 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 a little expensive i will say the regular retail price is a little bit up there but it's an expensive kit going on an expensive figure and you want it to look its best. If you're paying that much already for the figure, you can probably get the upgrade kit anyways. And it's very nice. And I would definitely say pick it up if you can. But that's been my look at DK20 upgrade kit for Devastator. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram linked below. Patreon's linked below and join the Discord. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.